example, uh, for example, what if um, there's it's a small town and there's basically one person selling carpets to everybody in the town? Well, uh, the fact that he has carpet fibers on himself that are the same as the carpet fibers in at the crime scene, well, then maybe just sat on his own carpet because he bought the same carpet. So it's a probabilistic thing. Like how many people have the same kind of carpet? One out of a hundred? One out of a thousand? One out of two? So again, it shows something. It shows a probability that he was at the crime scene, but how high a probability is it? If this is an extremely rare carpet, then it's extremely high probability that he got it from that one carpet that was at the crime scene. But again, we it's this is all based on probability. And that's an important idea. Uh, this is tells us the difference between what we call an individual versus a class characteristic. Individual characteristics are something that you can actually say comes from pretty much one thing and one thing only. That means there's a high probability that it's the same has the same source. Fingerprints, one of the, probably one of the most obvious ones. If the fingerprint at the crime scene matches the fingerprints of the suspect, it is extremely high probability that the suspect was there and put his fingerprints there. Um, DNA is the same thing. It's an extremely high probability if you find the person's DNA there that it was the person who was actually there. That's because of the, it's, you know, in fact, we really have not found any two people with fingerprints that are the same. Now, that doesn't mean that it's, that it's even, it's theoretically impossible. But since we have never found it, it's so improbable that somebody else had the same fingerprint, we discard it. And we say, this is an individual characteristic. Only one individual has this fingerprint. Same thing with DNA. Even the... Uh, uh, we kind of know about the probabilities of DNA analysis, and we can collect enough DNA or, or have enough information with DNA so that uh, that the odds that it's somebody else is is in the billions. It's one out of a, a billion against it being uh, someone else. So the probability is so high that this is the, the person that we can say that it is an individual characteristic. This DNA identifies the specific single individual. Sometimes, however, the clues and the evidence we have cannot end to identify an individual. There's no specific source. Like the type of bullet, it's uh, uh, whatever it is, a 20 caliber bullet. Now, not all gun or whatever, I don't know, I'm just making up a number. Um, uh, not all guns, now there are many guns that fire this, this specific caliber of bullet, but um, not all guns. So you can narrow it down. If the suspect has that kind of gun, that doesn't mean he's the only one. There's a, it's only problem. There's a probability. If the, this is like a rare gun, then it's a high probability. If it's a common enough gun that's found, then it's a low probability that he is the one. It will narrow down things. It's a class characteristic, not an individual characteristic, because it, it, it narrows it down to a certain class. Or a car paint color. You look around, you see uh, how many cars have the same exact paint job. I don't know. Let's say one out of a hundred, one out of a thousand. I don't know. Whatever the, the odds are. Cars have different paint colors, but some cars are the same. If you can show that that um, the car that was used by, in the crime you know, uh, left behind some paint scraping that was a certain color and the suspect has the same color, it doesn't prove it, but there's a probability that this person was there driving that car. Does that, is, does that individual? No, it does not point to this individual. There are others who may have had the same paint color for their car. But it does narrow things down. And even though it does not point to an individual, it is still very useful. It's also for blood types. They don't really use that anymore. If you have blood, they take DNA. Uh, but um, back in the day, if you only knew the, the, the blood type, like type A, type O, you can sort of match that with that of a suspect, but again, there are many people type A or type O, in which case uh, you narrow it down, so it, this is considered um, a class characteristic rather than an individual characteristic. Class evidence is not, you know, it's not, it's not perfect. It's not, it's not even that good by itself. Now, if we had the probability 
that this class evidence that uh, the person you know the that uh, you know exactly how probable it is that it's that this person was the one who was connected to the evidence it would be very nice if it was one out of a thousand we'd say well he's probably the guy if it's one out of two then we'd say we have no proof whatsoever it's the guy if we knew the number then things would be a lot easier for us the problem is we don't have it. There are so many different kinds of evidence, so many different kinds of clues, so many different possibilities that we just don't have information on, and these things change also, we just don't have the information, numerical, uh, quantitative information on how probable something is. The, cover, the example we used was carpet fibers. So how probable is it that the carpet fiber came from, that uh, like we find on the suspect, came from the carpet of, at the crime scene? Well, you have to know how many people have the same kind of carpet. Maybe it was in style, and a lot of people in the, in the, in the city have that carpet, and it's very low probability. How many stores sell the thing? Maybe uh, it's a rare carpet that's imported from uh, Norway or something like that. I don't know. And uh, almost nobody has it. Then, then, again, if we would only know all these things for every carpet and every carpet fiber, these, it would be, we'd have a lot more information. Unfortunately, we have no studies on everything. So there are most most um, of these uh, of these cases where we have class evidence. We don't have probability, but we have kind of like ballpark ideas as to as to how probable something is. Like you look around yourself. How many people have have um, have let's say shirts with the same color? I mean, think about it. Probably no one in the same class. And how big is the class? Uh, 30 people? I don't know. Uh, so, again, we can see an idea that, you know, the, the probability is less than uh, 1 in 30. So class characteristics is very valuable. And it's especially valuable if you have more than one piece of class evidence. It's when, it's when, because when you combine it with the other bits of class evidence, then things become a lot more uh, highly improbable that it's something else. So it's, or it's highly probable that you can connect the evidence that you have with an individual person. This year relies on the what they call the product rule of probability. The idea is that probability is getting multiplied. Here's how it works. What is probability, in case though people didn't know? I mean, the clearest definition of probability that I've seen is probability is the desired outcome divided by all possible outcomes. Simple case would be a six-sided dice. You want to have, a, let's say, a six. What's the probability you're going to get a six? You want a six. How many possibilities are there? Total possibility of six. You want one possibility. You want the single number six. So your probability is the one. You want one desired outcome divided by the total possible outcomes. That's one divided by six. So there's a 17% chance that you're going to get your wish that if you uh, roll a die and it works randomly, which is certainly assumed, so there's a 17% chance that it will be it'll be yours. So if you roll a dice, you say I I I uh, I want a six. You roll a dice and get a six. That's normal. 70% chance is reasonable to happen. What if you uh, want to have two sixes from two random dice? How probable is that? Well. Um, for that, you multiply the two. The one sixth, which is 70% chance, times one sixth. That's why we call it the product rule. Uh, that's one divided by 36, which is about 3%. A 3% chance. That's less than one in 10. So if you, you say, I want, I want two sixes in a row, 